here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. If you've been following along with my Red Sea build series, you know that we have talked about cord management, we've talked about all sorts of different equipment, we've even built the stand of the tank and installed the lights and everything, but you know what we haven't talked about? We haven't talked about salt. And that's pretty much one of the most important things for keeping a salt water tank, right? So today's video, I'm gonna talk about Red Sea salts and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what they call my recipe. So let's go ahead and get started talking about the salts. Now, Red Sea makes two different kinds of salt. They have the Red Sea salt and the Coral Pro salt. Now you might be thinking by the name Coral Pro that that's the premium high-end salt of the two, but believe it or not, either way you go, you are getting premium high-quality salt. Both of the salts are harvested from the Red Sea and they have elevated levels of the naturally occurring elements that you would want in your fish tank. Now, you're asking me what the difference is between these two because, well, honestly, that's a question that I asked for myself. And when I looked into it and did a little bit more studying, one of the main differences that I found is that the Red Sea salt has just a slightly lower alkalinity when you mix it to a specific point versus the Coral Pro, which has a slightly higher alkalinity. Now, when I say slightly lower, I'm talking about eight versus 12. Both of those are within the reasonable range which you would want to run your reef tank at. Now, when it comes to mixing their salts and preparing their salts, Red Sea gives you all the information that you need. You wanna mix it at 68 degrees Fahrenheit and they recommend using their refractometer. Now, you could be trying to use something else out there, but I gotta agree with them on this. Definitely go for a refractometer. It gives you a slightly more accurate reading than you would get if you are using a hydrometer. Now, one thing that they do tell you if you are using the refractometer is that you want to make sure to calibrate it each time that you use it. So that's pretty simple enough. Now, I'm not gonna run you through how to make a batch of salt, well, at least not in this video, but I am gonna show you this other component of the Red Sea, um, I guess, recipe that you could call it, that I think is pretty interesting. So you can follow along with me on the screen or you can go ahead and check this out for yourself on the computer. But I gotta say, for all of the different aquariums that I've, I've kept, I really like how they have this spelled out and all of the different information that they give you. And they've done all the math, so you don't have to. All right, now let's talk about my recipe. So Red Sea has configured this all in a way to break it down in easy to understand steps. So first off, when you go to their website and you select my recipe, it's going to ask you if the kind of tank you are keeping is going to be growing SPS corals, um, if it's gonna be a mixed reef, if it is gonna be a frag tank, or if it's going to be a soft tank. Now, depending on what you select for that, I'm gonna go ahead and select mixed reef because I've already kind of got a lot of the corals planned out in my mind, what I wanna keep in my tank, and it's definitely along the lines of a mixed reef. Now, the next thing that they ask you is they want you to select what your goals or objectives, as they call them, are for your tank. Do you wanna have exceptional growth or do you wanna have exceptional color? Or do you wanna be somewhere in the middle of those? Well. I'm looking to be somewhere in the middle, so I'm gonna select that second option. Now, what I really like about this step is it tells you how many hours per week that you can expect to be spending on maintaining your tank. That's not to say that you can't spend more time on your tank observing and taking care of it, but you, if you know you only have a limited amount of time, this is a step where you can kind of select and narrow it down. All right, it's gonna ask you what country that you're in, so go ahead and select that. And then it's gonna ask you 
what your tank's total volume of water is. Now, when they say total volume of water, they are asking for the amount of water that is in your display and in your sump. Now, I have a 425, which means it's roughly 115 gallons. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. Make sure when you're doing this, you select the correct gallons or liters. All right, now that I've given the recipe wizard all of the information it's asked for, it has given me my recipe. Now, don't worry if you do this and your recipe is slightly different than mine, everybody's tank may be slightly different and that's okay. So first things first, it lets me know that I will probably need to be using the Coral Pro Salt. Now, after it tells me that, it gives me a list of where my parameters should be from where the salinity is, where I should be running my calcium, my magnesium, phosphate, uh, nitrates, and alkalinity. So I have a good idea of where I should be keeping them. Now, if you continue to scroll further down, it tells you how to keep the parameters. It tells me that if I want to keep my tank at that great uh, color and that great growth, rate that I'm going to be needing to do a water change every week and I'm going to be needing to do 10% water change. And then it tells me about how much that's going to cost in salt per month. Now, if you continue on and look at the supplements, it tells you exactly how much you need to be dosing of each of those supplements daily. And then again, it's going to give you the cost per month on average. It does the same thing with the um, trace elements. It does the same with algae pre prevention and with coral nutrition. Next, it's going to tell you how to monitor your parameters and which of the different parameters you should be testing and how often. Now, when you're done with this, you can get them to send you the recipe that is created for you. Now, something else that's interesting that you can get Red Sea to send you is basically an ICP test um, results for the batch of salt that you have. So if you go to the Red Sea website and you click on my batch, you can put information that you will find either on your box of salt or either on your container of salt, and they will send you an email with all of the information about that batch of salt. So all of the salts are um, small batch, they are consistently mixed and really premium quality salts. But Red Sea knows that in the last few years, there's been a lot of um, scares when it comes to salt, people getting bad batches. So this is just another added layer of assurance that they've offered you to help make sure you have a peace of mind when it comes to taking care of your tank. All right, now if this hasn't convinced you enough, if you have questions that I haven't answered in this video, and you might, feel free to go to the Facebook group that Red Sea offers. They have support there and are happy to answer any questions that you might have. And the same thing goes with saltwateraquarium.com. Feel free to send a message, ask, leave a comment in this video, and we would be happy to get your questions answered. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.